come for you to lay down the heavy burden and responsibility of leadership in the free world or for that mother of the world. For by the inexorable decision of destiny, you have become the trustee of our civilization and you cannot abandon this role no matter what we do. <laughs> How can America speak to Asia? I would say, America, speak from the depths of your own heart. Speak in the language of Jefferson. Speak with the wisdom of a Lincoln. Speak with the compassion of Roosevelt, with the vision of Kennedy and the ringing challenge of President Johnson. When he said, the peace that I seek is not a peace that means the absence of armed hostilities. For where men hunger and hate, there can be no peace. The peace I seek is a peace of conciliation, a conciliation of the communist states with their non-communist neighbors, between the rich nations and the poor, between the great and the small. This is the peace I seek. Can it come about? In all my heart, I think it can. We have far to go. We have far to journey. Addressed in these accents, America, Asia will listen to you. And confronted with these challenges, Asia will respond. When I uh, went to Arlington Cemetery, it was raining, and uh, I was reminded of it being many days uh, to stay in a foxhole, the water up to your knees, and um, wondering how many boys of my age when I was a soldier were now in foxholes doing the same thing, eating and sleeping in the foxhole. And then, uh, as I saluted the tomb of the unknown, one thought entered my mind, there but for the grace of God lies I. When I went to the uh, U.S. Congress, I kept telling myself, these are hard-headed politicians. Uh, you make your appeal, but make it short and make it an objective, dispassionate appeal. But it didn't come out that way. I did feel it was a little uh, emotional. But the most painful feeling that I have is that which I felt when I talked to my former comrades in the war. For they scoffed at our medals and laughed at our scars. Especially one particular scar that I bear with pride. With as much pride as any decoration that has been granted me. A scar from a wound I received in attempting to save the life of an American comrade. Where is your American friend now, they ask me. He is dead, and with him have died all our dreams. Yes, he was my American comrade. And he was a blood brother, for he fought in my native land. We were surrounded, as men often we were. We had to break out. And in breaking out, I saw him fall and try to crawl to safety. I returned to him only to fall beside him. The blood of Filipino and American mingling in Philippine soil. As I cradled him in my arms towards a foxhole, he said, I die. But go tell them, tell them back home you who will live. Tell them that I die with only one regret, and that is that America has failed us. And the Filipino that I was, as if I could retrieve him with my words from the hands of death, 
answered him with confidence. As I said, no, America does not forget and America will not fail. Many years have passed since then. And time should have muted the tone of confidence and the tyranny of circumstance should have eroded this memory. But today, I still say, as I have said to my people, no, America is just. America does not forget. America will not fail us.